I think I've said this before, and I'm not the type of guy who really wants to exaggerate, but honestly, I really mean it when I say that Far Cry 2 is probably the most fun yet frustrating game I've ever played. It's such a strange game that I feel like has grown a cult following in recent years, as I remember when Far Cry 3 came out, nobody ever talked about the first two games. And yet, ever since reviewing the first game, I feel like I've gotten more requests to do a Far Cry 2 review than probably any other game. And after playing it, I can see why. You're never going to play a game quite like Far Cry 2. It truly feels experimental, which is something you'll never see from a modern AAA game. Or at least, not the type of experimental that any real fan of video games wants, anyway. And so the question is, is Far Cry 2 secretly the best game in the series, and just never got the credit it deserved? Well, before we get into this, do the things the algorithm likes. Subscribe if you want to see all my content. I've got a lot of other positive videos that people never end up seeing, and they seem to think I hate every video game, or at least every modern video game, but they might be onto something. And if you want to support me directly, check out my Patreon. And without further ado, Let's hunt down the jackal. Ah, shit! Come on, come on, come on! No! Fuck it on jam! Wait, the guns explode? What the fuck? Uh... Is that supposed to happen? <laughs> If you take the standard gameplay mechanics at face value, this game is surprisingly similar to Far Cry 3. You can definitely see how they went from the strange, almost tech demo-like experimental mechanics in this game, and then basically just trimmed the fat and made it much more mainstream appealing for the next one. For better or worse. Shooting, sneaking, driving, these all feel pretty similar to later Far Cry games. But the devil is in the details, as we're going to talk about the things that really make this game feel distinct, and unlike anything you'll likely see in a modern game. The first thing you're likely to notice is the weapon jamming mechanic. This alone will probably make or break your enjoyment for this game. While it actually is highly avoidable if you're willing to do a bit more driving around, which is one of my major issues with the game we'll get into later. Basically, much like the Fallout games, weapons have durability, right? The more you use them, the more they start to fall apart. And the more the weapon has degraded, the higher chance it has to jam. And jamming is exactly what it sounds like. The weapon fails to fire, and you gotta get that bullet out of the chamber. And every single gun in the game has a unique weapon jamming animation, which is really cool. Your gun durability can get so low in this game that the gun will just explode in your hands randomly. The first time that happened, that was crazy. I, I love that. That being said, at the same time, it can be either very exciting and unexpected or really annoying, depending on the type of person that you are. As yeah, one moment you're shooting somebody, and the next, your character is staring at his gun in confusion while you're getting riddled full of bullets. And much like other Far Cry games, you don't have a whole lot of health. And if you're playing on any difficulty above normal, just standing a few seconds out in the open is enough to put you in a dying state. Speaking of which, that mechanic is a bit different in this one than in later Far Cry games. The actual health system is similar, where instead of using a magical green syringe, you use an adrenaline syrette to heal any bars of health as long as you're above one bar. But if you go down to one bar of health, you start bleeding out. And bleeding out is exactly what it sounds like. If you don't quickly treat that wound, you die. And this is where the brutal healing animations come into play. And despite being the first game in the series to use this, it is by far the most brutal. Uh, gotta heal really quick. Oh, no, oh, god damn, dude. And to touch on a unique cool mechanic that really hasn't been done nearly as well since, fire in this game spreads like wildfire. Just one Molotov in those dry grasses, and boom, the entire fucking plane is on fire. And this is more than just a novelty, you can actually use this to cut off enemy flanks. I did it many times. 
And honestly, it's just cool. Despite being a game that came out over 12 years ago, seeing a sea of flames in front of you is pretty neat, to be honest. And fire has never worked this way since in any of the games. It's a shame. But to get back to the shooting mechanics, if I had to have one major complaint with them, it's that almost every weapon in the game uses iron sights. Now, I know some people like iron sights, but in most games, they're implemented in such a way that they cover too much of the screen and you can rarely see your target, and this game is no different. And to make matters worse, every gun in the game except the sniper rifles have an accuracy stat below 100, and significantly below 100 at that. So even if you have your target perfectly lined up, if you're more than 100 yards away from them, you're going to miss several of those bullets, which makes stealth in this game much more difficult among other things, which we'll get into later. Probably the coolest element of the shooting mechanics is the loadout system. This was another thing that was sort of just simplified in later Far Cry games, and I would argue was definitely made worse in later Far Cry games, as those systems are a lot more open, where you basically have three normal slots and then one handgun slot, right? Well, in Far Cry 2, you have a primary slot, a handgun slot, and a special slot. And there's actually a surprising amount of guns in this game. Probably the most in every Far Cry game, or at least close. Which really leaves for a lot of competition in those three slots. I mean, in the primary slot alone, you could have a shotgun, assault rifle, SMG, sniper rifle, or grenade launcher. And pretty much all of these are viable to some extent. Even in the wide African plains, you can probably still find a few uses for a shotgun. And if you're willing to unlock every weapon, there's also pretty much similar utility in every slot as well. Whether it's a silent Makarov, MP5 SD, or the dart rifle, you can pretty much have a silenced weapon in any slot for stealth. There's also an explosive in every slot, of which the M32 grenade launcher is definitely a fun one. And really, it's just these unique slot picks that mix things up so much. The aforementioned M32 is the only explosive in the primary slot, and so you could mix things up with the Uzi or MAC-10 as your automatic in the secondary slot, or have the LMG as your automatic in the special slot, and so without me really having to explain it in detail, you can sort of see why this is the best loadout system in the series. With you having to make some important compromises, at least until later in the game when you start unlocking more of the guns, which to quickly explain, this is one of the elements I don't like about the game, is that you have to do gun missions to unlock more guns. The problem is, you can only do one mission at a time in this game, and that's all mission types included. And so you can only do a gun mission when you're doing no other mission, and every gun mission is exactly the same. You find a wandering patrol somewhere on the map, and you blow it up, and that's it. And so at the beginning, you really have no choice other than to grab shitty weapons off of the various mercenaries that you kill throughout the game. And probably as you would expect, their guns are in terrible condition. Though conveniently, that never affects your enemies. Not once will they jam their guns. And often when you pick them up, there's only a few bullets left in the magazine. So you have to spend diamonds to unlock guns that appear in these warehouses next to the gun store. And you can grab an infinite amount of perfect condition guns anytime you visit the warehouse after you've purchased that gun. Which leads into the main currency system of which there is but one, and that is blood diamonds. And this is Africa, so I'm sure you have a good idea of where those come from. And on top of getting them for doing main missions and these assassination missions that you can get at radio towers, you can also find little diamond briefcases scattered all across the map. There's a shit ton of them, so you're likely going to just find some naturally. But unlike later Far Cry games, there is no collectible map that you can buy, so you're going to have to use a guide if you're one of those 100%er type of people. And on top of unlocking new guns and upgrading said guns, you can also unlock expansions for your ammo capacity, and you can also buy a stealth suit, which notably is bugged in the original version of the game and does nothing. So don't waste the 40 diamonds unless you install the mod that I'm going to cover near the end of the video. And so yeah, ultimately, what these loadouts lead to is one of the main gameplay styles, 
which is pretty much just stealth or action, right? Well, the problem is, is that action is not so viable. And honestly, it's just because the AI, ironically, is smarter in this game than any of the Far Cry games after it. Now, some of this might not sound revolutionary to you because some of these have just been done in a lot of other games. But I'd say, especially given the open-ended map design, the AI did impress me with its intelligence, especially the flanking maneuvers. I can't tell you the amount of times that I was hiding behind a tree because it was pretty much the only cover. That's one of the downsides of this map taking place in huge African plains, is that there's very little cover unless you're actually in one of the encampments. If you get caught out in the middle of nowhere, you're probably fucking dead because the enemies will flank you on both sides and know how to take cover behind trees themselves. But on top of that, they can also throw grenades. Some of them have rockets, which are kind of insane, to be honest. There are snipers perched in outposts in certain encampments. And on top of all that, there are vehicle patrols roaming the map. This is kind of one of the worst designed aspects of the game, and I feel like anybody who's played this game already knows what I'm going to talk about. But the map itself is probably going to be your greatest enemy in this game, because of just a couple things. One, you can only fast travel to five locations on each of the two maps, using the various bus stops. So often, if not the vast majority of the time, the missions that you go to don't take place anywhere near a bus stop. And so it is unavoidable the amount of driving that you're going to do in this game. And the driving is so fucking boring. Because you're literally just traversing the same several roads over and over and over again. That was by far the worst part of the game for me, hands down. Just driving from point A to point B, it literally wastes hours of your time. It's not even safe to drive on these roads, and I know some people have spun this in a positive light. To me, it is the second worst feature in the game, that as soon as you leave an encampment, you don't even have to travel a quarter of a mile before every enemy respawns in that camp you just cleared out. And to make matters worse, it is very difficult to actually avoid these camps because they are set at strategic checkpoints on every single road, which makes sense, it makes a lot of sense. The problem is there are a lot of mountain ranges or whatever they're supposed to be, these elevations on the map that block your path, so you have to travel on the roads. And again, to bring it back around to how I started this point, there are vehicle patrols. And all it takes is one guy on a mounted LMG, or even worse, in the second map, there are heavy machine gunners. And a heavy machine gun can kill you in like three hits on hard, which just makes things fucking ridiculous. It is extremely easy to die in this game. In fact, the amount of times I got killed just by someone running me over with a car, which admittedly, pretty smart. And there's a sound cue when enemies are about to run you over too, so it doesn't really feel that cheap. Oh, and to bring up yet another annoying mechanic, your character has malaria in this game. You actually have to do missions to get malaria pills to stave off the disease. And unfortunately, you only get two or three pills for each mission you complete. And every time the malaria strikes you, you're basically paralyzed and can't do anything else until it either wears off or you take the pill. And after three times that that happens without treatment, you die. And so for obvious reasons, it just feels like a complete fucking waste of time to do these little repetitive missions to get more pills. It is just padding, plain and simple. But to get back into the actual styles of gameplay, stealth might be my biggest issue with this game. I'll admit, I like challenging stealth generally in games, right? The problem is, I don't like stealth that is very unclear in how its mechanics work, and this is one of those games. See, because unlike almost every modern game that just half-ass throws in some stealth mechanics, especially when somehow your character psychically knows when an enemy can see you, Far Cry 2 does none of that. You have no idea if an enemy sees you until they see you and have alerted the entire camp. Not to mention, the sight lines on enemies are insane. And by insane, I mean, well, actually realistic. But again, it feels very unbalanced because there's not much working in your favor. You can't hide in deep grass. You can't lie prone. 
but as far as I can tell, and I think the game does state this, at night it does reduce the enemy's sight radius a bit. So if you are going to attempt stealth, try to do it at night. And if you thought you could rely on the machete for stealth takedowns, nope. There's no stealth takedowns in this game. The machete is basically just an emergency melee weapon. But with so few mechanics to aid in the stealth, while simultaneously stealth feels really important because just two or three enemies shooting you at the same time can kill you pretty fucking fast, it sort of creates this weirdly frustrating experience where attempting a full stealth run is very difficult because even if you do use a completely silenced weapon, there's a very good chance some enemy will instantly discover their dead buddy and I don't even know why. I don't know if it's because they saw their buddy or maybe they were slightly too close to one of their other buddies and they heard their friend die. I don't know, the game doesn't tell you. And so while on the one hand, I would definitely say stealth is a smarter option than going guns blazing most of the time, it's also very difficult to actually maintain stealth properly. Yet on the other hand, snipers are wildly unbalanced in this game. If you snipe a camp from 600 yards, the enemies will never discover you. They're smart enough to take cover, sure, but eventually when they pop out, you just pop their heads one by one, and that's it. And so by the end of the game, when I was kind of getting tired of stuff, because the game is pretty repetitive, right? I basically just sniped enemies over and over and over again until I was forced to get close to a camp, and that's when shit usually went wrong, right? And like I mentioned earlier, to drive it home, Snipers, even without the accuracy upgrade, are nearly 100% accurate. And I think with the upgrade, they are. They hit on target from any distance. Which puts them at a severe advantage to every other gun in the game, especially if you're playing on PC, right? And yeah, if I had to pick out something that's yet another kind of weak point of the game, it's the mission design. All of the missions feel pretty much the same. I think they're just an excuse for you to try out different loadouts with the guns and other than visiting different locations in the map, nothing else really feels different. The game does try to spice it up a little bit by having these buddy missions, which to quickly explain the buddy system, I guess the developers realize that it's very easy to die in this game and so if you have a buddy, the buddy will save you the first time you go down and then you need to rest at one of the safe houses, and then you can speak to your buddy and bring him alongside you again. Now here's the thing though, these buddies have permadeath, which is actually pretty interesting, even though it doesn't come up that often, unless you're playing on the highest difficulty, in which case your buddies are made of glass. But if one of your buddies goes down and you don't have any serrets left, you actually have to kill them, which is fucking brutal the first time that happened. That blew my mind. <laughs> Shit, I'm out of syringes. Oh. Oh god, what? No, what? Oh my god, no! What the fuck? Do I have to kill her? Holy shit, dude, really? But that being said, despite the downsides, I still had a hell of a lot of fun. And honestly, in this game, I think I had the funniest death I've ever had in a video game. I couldn't believe it when it first happened, so that, that was hilarious. I would talk about the story, but there isn't really a story to speak of. Long story short, you get to choose your character at the beginning of the game, and no matter who you choose, your government has assigned you to assassinate the Jackal, a man who's been selling firearms to basically all of the warring African factions. And in this unnamed country in Africa is the last place he's been spotted. And so you go in, try to assassinate him. And apparently somewhere along the way you get malaria. So what ends up happening is that while you've got malaria, the jackal finds you. And basically you can see how every Far Cry game after this sort of got inspired by the charismatic yet crazy or just genocidal villain as the Jackal was pretty much the first in the series to fit that agenda, and he's pretty good. He's notable in that he is one of the few characters that actually has good voice acting in this game, because I'm not sure if anyone else noticed this, but this game actually has really bad voice acting. My name's Frank Builders. I'll be your skipper today. We won't be serving refreshments, I'm afraid, but what we will serve is a huge steaming pile of semi autic weapons to the poor souls living in Porcelano. But the Jackal is not one of them, which I guess is part of what makes him stand out so much. 
and his story is actually really interesting there are these jackal tapes that you find throughout the map that explain his backstory and what leads him up to this point point. and honestly that's all i can tell you for non-spoilers so spoiler warning obviously right here Throughout the game, you can essentially choose to do missions for the UFLL or the APR, which are both supposedly fighting for the freedom of this country and its civilians, but both are obviously corrupt and evil, and you actually work for both sides as just a mercenary, right? Well, once you get to the halfway point in the game, you basically get to choose who you want to side with and eliminate a major member of the opposite faction. Thing is... As soon as you complete the mission, you get betrayed by the very people who just hired you. And they send a kill squad to the bar that you hang out with, with your buddies sometimes to do missions for them. Basically, uh, you're fucked. You lose. After you get gunned down, surprisingly, the Jackal himself saves you. And essentially makes a comparison to the malaria that you're infected with to the actual warring factions in this country. First, they'll take everything they can get their hands on. Rob the banks and the stores. Then... The men will be lined up against the wall and shot. Chop children's arms off and cut the tenons in the necks. And the women. There's a goddamn disease for this. A cancer. You see it, they can't get enough. They just take and take until it kills them. And once they're gone, someone else takes their place and their disease too. Every cell is infected. And the longer you stay, the deeper the virus goes. In the end, nobody will be left. Just the disease. So what do you do with this particular situation? Quarantine the patients. And so the jackal leaves you to your fate. You survive, because you've got plot armor, of course. And you travel to the second map of the game. You complete more missions, hopefully for the opposite faction now, if you've learned your lesson. You finally are given the location of the Jackal once again. And you track him down to a hut, and his plot armor kicks in, and he kicks your shit in. As you're lying on the ground, he rants to you about, essentially, he used to be you... And he's realized after all the crimes he's committed that he's just made things worse for the people of Africa and that war is going to start over and over again regardless of his interference. And so you need to help him and he takes your giant case of diamonds and knocks you out. Then you have to break out of a prison with no weapons which is one of the few memorable missions in the game. And this is kind of where the story starts to fall apart because things aren't explained all that well or maybe my brain was just starting to fry at this point. But your character sort of decides on his own, probably because he is a silent protagonist, whoever you pick. So it would be kind of hard to explain your character's change of allegiance. But basically, you decide to team up with the Jackal. You basically kill off all of the heads of both the UFLL and the APR. And then you go on one final mission to meet up with the Jackal and try and right the wrongs that you've committed in this country. And the game fumbles yet again with a weird twist where you have to grab this big case of diamonds that is in some kind of landing zone or arena, and hey look, one of your buddies is waiting for you. And guess what, it's an ambush. All of your buddies that are still alive betray you over the diamonds. This part's kind of fucked. And I understand that it's part of the game's lesson that everyone is a bad guy here. There's not a single person left with any morals. Everyone is consumed by greed. But these are your guys who saved your ass multiple times throughout the game. You can help them out in their missions, increase their history. No matter how nice you are to them, they all betray you in the end. And it just kind of feels scummy, to be honest. And so after you're fighting your way through essentially what is the only linear level in the game, you meet up with the Jackal and you get one of two flavors of the same ending. You can either set off some explosives to distract the warring factions at the border, or you can cross the border with the civilians to help them escape, and you just end up blowing your brains out at the end anyway. Because the Jackal convinces you that both of you have committed horrible crimes, and that the only way to end this is for everyone to die. It really kind of breaks my immersion a little bit, and I understand that despite the fact we're playing as a silent protagonist, we are technically still playing as a character, but it really took me out because there's no way I would ever blow my brains out just because some psycho terrorist gun runner fucking warlord guy convinces me that we're all bad guys and we all need to die. Fuck that, dude. Before we get to the conclusion, I quickly want to talk about the Far Cry 2 Redux mod, which quite a few people recommended I check out. 
I replayed roughly 10 hours of the game with the mod, and I gotta say, it's pretty good. It feels a bit more like a patch than a true gameplay changing mod, but it changes quite a few things that make a significant difference. The good thing about Redux is that it kind of compiles a bunch of different older mods people have done, and there's also a few new changes in there. But I'm not gonna cover everything, so I'll just address the few big things. Probably the best change is the ability for the two enemy factions to actually fight each other. I honestly can't believe this wasn't in the base game. While admittedly it doesn't actually come up that often because the only times the enemies will really fight each other outside of two scripted sequences is when a patrol vehicle wanders into the opposite faction's camp, which is still a pretty cool moment, makes for a good distraction if you want to take out that camp, so definitely a good change. The next one is the addition of the flamethrower enemy type. Now, this implementation isn't perfect, but it's pretty cool to have flamethrower guys show up, and they're fairly rare, so it doesn't really get that annoying. But it just adds another layer of chaos to the mix. The stealth suit has been fixed, and so has healing yourself in the infamous difficulty mode, which is the highest difficulty and also the recommended difficulty for this mod, so that's what I played when I played it. And yeah, apparently in the base game, healing yourself at less than one bar of health just wouldn't work sometimes, so that's been fixed. Weapon damage has been tweaked. Now most enemies will die in three shots, which is definitely good. It sort of levels out the playing field where the snipers were just objectively the best guns in the game. Now, not quite so much, so that's definitely an improvement. Now you can jump slightly higher and can sort of do a Skyrim climbing type of thing, where before you would just slide off of any ledge. Now you can sort of scale up decently steep cliff sides, which makes getting some of those diamond briefcases easier. And the final change, and probably the biggest, is the map system has been completely changed. I didn't really explain this in the body of the review, but one of the kind of cool elements of Far Cry 2 is that you actually have to stare at a map to figure out where you are. There's no mini-map in the game, right? Now, this mod changes it so that the map you hold is actually a handwritten map, which means that you can't actually see where on the map you are, you have to look at the GPS, which is next to your map, to determine where you are on the larger map. But honestly, I thought it was a pretty cool change because the GPS just sort of felt redundant in the base game. It was only really used to find those diamond briefcases. So all in all, pretty good mod. Doesn't really change the core gameplay, which is completely fine. It just sort of fixes some of the bugs and adds some nice quality of life features. I would definitely recommend it. In conclusion, I'd say it's a pretty great game. Now, despite whatever I gave the title of this video, which is probably at least slightly clickbaity, you know how it is, I wouldn't say this is the best Far Cry game. I could see why people would think that, for sure. It strips away the unnecessary RPG mechanics that only got more and more convoluted with each entry, and it just boils down to simple gameplay. It doesn't waste your time with a bunch of cutscenes and villain monologues. And there's a lot less weird plot armor villain moments, especially Far Cry 5 had like five or six times that the villains just got away. And at the end of the day, it's a pretty fun game, and even after playing pretty much every Far Cry game, this one still felt fresh. I think especially just the gun jamming mechanic on its own was really interesting and fun. That being said, the heavy travel times really bogged down the experience. I think just putting limited fast travel in any sandbox game is a mistake, honestly. You're just wasting people's time. But at the end of the day, this is a really fun game. It's definitely worth going back and playing if you haven't played it before. And I'm sure you can get it for dirt cheap. I mean, it's what, like 13 years old? And so we all know there's going to be a Far Cry 6 this year. I can only hope that they try to mix up the formula because I'm sure I'm far from the only person that is sick of playing basically a slight variation of Far Cry 3 every couple years. And after playing this, I hope they borrow at least just a little bit from Far Cry 2. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, do the things the algorithm likes. Really appreciate it. Thank you to my patrons. And this is going to be a quick one, as I'm sure editing this video was a giant pain in the ass. So next up should be Deus Ex, unless some crazy gaming news stuff comes out of nowhere, who knows. I'll probably be working on Ostra's Wrath as well, I'm also thinking about doing Dead Space 3 sometime in the future.
but that might come out in a month or two months, who the hell knows. So, should be interesting either way. But that's about it. I'll see you next time, guys.